Let me take you through the interface of Affinity Designer for iPad. When you open the app, you will be presented with the home screen and the Live Doc tab will be open. Live Docs are currently open saved and unsaved documents, presented in a grid of large thumbnails. If you're starting the app for the first time, this will be empty until you create a new document, open an existing one from your files, or a sample from the Lessons tab. You can tap through the tabs down the side to access different options. New allows you to set up a new document from scratch, clipboard content, or a template. You can also create projects for storing documents that are related. Open takes you to your file browser, so you can find a previously created document that you'd like to open or import. Templates sets a folder for your templates and imports additional templates. Lessons lets you browse a selection of lessons and free sample documents to download so that you can explore the layer stack to see how the compositions were created. On the Help tab, you can navigate to the comprehensive help documentation, the online learning portal, the quick start guide, and the What's New page for information about our most recent updates. Account shows you your licensing and version information and allows you to download add-ons that you've purchased through the Affinity Store. And finally, tap the Settings tab to access the app's settings and options to tailor how the app operates to suit your workflow. I'll go back to Live Docs and open this document. The document opens in the middle of the workspace. This is known as the document view. The user interface feels very similar to the desktop version of the app. To the left, we have the tools panel. Here you'll find the tools needed to create your artwork, like the pen tool, pencil tool, and shape tools. Some tools have a small gray triangle icon next to them. These indicate that this is part of a tool group. You can tap on the tool to select it, and then tap again to reveal the rest of the tool group. I'll tap the Move tool. This is the tool that you'll primarily use to select content and move it around on your document. At the bottom of the Tools panel, you can tap the X icon to deselect the currently selected object or layer, or the Bin icon to delete it. You can use two fingers to move around your document, and a two-finger pinch to zoom in and out. I can tap the Zoom button at the top to instantly fit the document to the bounds of the document view. In the top left of the interface, we can access Designer's three personas. These are different workspaces for different tasks or workflows. The first persona is the Designer persona. This is the default persona and contains vector tools for creating vector art and shapes. Vector art is made of curves and nodes and can be scaled up or down without losing its sharpness. It's great for making logos, illustrations and assets for websites, apps and infographics. Below this we have the pixel persona. If I select this persona, the workspace changes and now I have access to raster or pixel tools like the paintbrush tool, erase brush tool and smudge brush tool for making raster artwork. Raster art is made of rows and columns of pixels. This persona is great for creating digital paintings, illustrations with texture, or making selections from photos and images. Finally, we have the export persona. If you want to export the whole document or specific artboard, you can do this through the main export dialog on the document menu. The export persona, however, gives you finer control over exporting a specific area or layer of a document by creating slices and you can export multiple slices simultaneously. I'll move back to the designer persona. Continuing along the top toolbar, we have the document menu, which contains document settings and key functions like print and export. You can also place images and files and create artboards, as well as toggling the command controller. The command controller allows you to alter the current tool's behavior using the keyboard modifiers Shift, Command, Option, and Control. You can drag the controller to temporarily engage a modifier, or tap to lock it on. This way, you can lock more than one modifier at once. If you hold the command controller, you can move it to a new location on the workspace. On the Edit menu, there are sets of functionality, like different clipboard behaviors, insertion targets, operations like convert to curves 
and fill modes. Next along is the context toolbar. Here the options will update depending on the tool that you have selected. For example, if I select the pencil tool, I have access to the stroke color, sculpt, auto close, and the stabilizer options. If I change to the artistic text tool, I now have font and formatting options. The magnifying glass towards the right of the context toolbar zooms the document to fit the document view, as we saw before, and the drop down menu next to it contains zoom level presets. Along from this is a preview mode button that we can toggle on or off. If you have margins, bleeds, or guides on your work, it can be useful to temporarily hide them. Next along is snapping. This helps objects to snap to guides and other objects. You can tap the button next to it to open the snapping options. The Hide UI icon at the end of the toolbar hides all of the panels and toolbars so you can maximise your workspace. Down the right side, we have a series of panels like the colour panel, where you can choose the stroke or fill colours, the layers panel, which lists the objects or layers in the document, or the adjustments panel, where you can apply corrective or creative adjustments. Near the bottom of the right studio, you'll find the transform and navigator panels, as well as the history panel. At the very bottom right is a help button. Hold this to view the tooltips for the tools and panels. The top menus, modes, and current features on the context toolbar will appear in the middle. Finally, if you long press on the document view or swipe down with three fingers, you can access the quick menu, which presents you with commonly used commands. So that was a tour around the user interface for Affinity Designer for iPad. Thanks for watching.